Hello, my name is Caesar, and I want to give you guys some Carnival Cruise tips, so let's just get right into it. So most people don't know how to process when you're exiting the ship when you're at a port of call. Make sure you take your sail and sign card because once you guys first checked in, they take a picture of you. So when you're going back in, they make sure it's the same person and make sure you guys bring your government issued ID. In my case, it's my California ID. So do not forget these two pieces of documents and you're gonna need them to get back on the ship. So a tip for you soda drinkers, you could bring a 12 pack of soda or juice as long as it's in a can or a carton per person on the cruise. So take advantage of that. The only thing is you have to carry it on board with you. You cannot put it in your check-in bag. I have a tip for all my wine and champagne drinkers. You could bring a 750 milliliter bottle of wine or champagne on your cruise on the first day, which is embarkation day. Do not forget to bring uh, your corkscrew or else you would be charged a $15 corkage fee and you do not want to pay that. So also same thing, you have to carry it on you, on your person or in your carry-on bag. You cannot check it in if you're going to bring a 750 milliliter bottle with you on the ship. There are two different times when it comes to Carnival Cruise dinner. One is anytime dining and that's 6.15 p.m to 9 15 p.m. depending on what ship you're on so on that one it's better for beginners because you don't know what time shows are at you don't know what time your port you're coming back from the port or any of that and then there's a specific time dining that's what we're at right now we have an 8 15 p.m. dining so it's either we eat here or we eat somewhere else but we cannot come here for dinner if we don't show up at 8 15. The suggestion that we have, which is a nice tip, is you could say it's your anniversary when you're doing your check-in, and when you do, you could get a private table like the one that we have right here, or you could share a table with people that you don't know, like some of the people that are over here next to us. If you are a gambler, make sure you bring cash with you because the ATM is very expensive to pull out cash. You can add cash to your sale and sign card. That's the way it's done here. If you're looking to gamble at the casino, it is 18 and up, and this is a designated smoking area for you smokers. You can smoke here in the casino. And speaking of cash, a lot of people ask me, how much cash do I bring per excursion or per port of call? I usually bring $100 per person. Like I bring $100 for myself, $100 for my wife, and usually $200 is pretty good for us to go to one port of call day. So depending on how many excursions you got, or how many tours or ports of call, I usually bring $100 per day. I wanna take a second to talk about the three types of tours or excursion. The first one is Carnival Cruise. So it has two pros. If the tour company is running late, they are gonna wait for you so the ship is not gonna take off and that is a big pro. Another pro is for whatever reason, if you don't go to that port of call, they refund you the money right back to your sale and sign card. The con, which is a big con, is it's usually a little more expensive than going out there and just getting a tour on your own and that's my second thing so w me and my wife we usually just go out we get a tour on our own for the most part it's usually 25 or 30 dollars and that usually covers a two hour to three hour tour i mean we're always happy with the tours that we go on so that's the that's the way we go and then the third one is actually getting a tour from a third party like if you go to TripAdvisor and get a tour through there or if you go to expedia and go get a tour through there the good thing about them is uh, you know you have your tour secured but the bad thing is if you don't go to that port of call for that day for whatever reason um, they will not refund you the money so the thing is it's kind of a gamble if you use a third party tour or excursion site so this next tip is very important that's why I'm gonna repeat it because I do have another Carnival Cruise tips video I'll link it down below if you guys want to check that out but please, please, please put your phone on airplane mode before you take off on your cruise ship because you can be charged for roaming. And roaming on a cruise ship is actually more expensive than roaming in another country. So please do that. Another thing I do is I call my cell phone provider before I go on a cruise and let them know to all the ports that I'm gonna be visiting and to see how much it is. Sometimes it's free for data, sometimes it's free for text, but they usually charge per minute when you're actually doing a phone call. So call them up, find out what everything is before you get on your cruise because you do not want those extra charges. 
So this next tip is a space saver for your luggage or any large items that you might have. A lot of first time cruisers don't know about it, but under your bed, you have a storage area. You just throw your luggage under there and it hides pretty well. And then you're good to go. Do not forget your nausea medicine. You could either buy the pills, the wristband, which is the C-band, or the patch that goes behind your ear. If you don't bring it, they sell it a little bit more expensive here than they would at a general store or if you get it off of Amazon. So bring your medicine, either if it's your first cruise or you've been on a couple cruises, uh, I always bring it just in case. And also one more thing, they say a green apple helps take the nausea away. I wanna know if anybody has tried that and if it works or not, please put that in the comment box below. Carnival has a forward camera channel. This is real helpful if you have an interior room. You don't know if it's daylight or not outside. All you have to do is change it to this channel and you can see if it's daylight. Another cool thing is you can see when you're actually arriving to port. That's pretty cool. You could also use it as a night light in the middle of the night. It lights up the room just right. That way if you have to do a bathroom break or any of that good stuff. And then another channel they have is the Lido Deck channel. So if you're thinking about going up there to the pool, you can actually see if it's crowded or not or see if it's happening. This next one is a money saving tip. Make sure you bring your reusable water bottles or your thermals with you to fill up at the buffet. If you don't fill up at the buffet and you grab one of those expensive water bottles in the room, they're $4 each. So what we do is we usually fill up at night. We take these bottles to the room. That way we don't accidentally reach over and grab one of those $4 water bottles just in case we get thirsty in the middle of the night. These are also helpful when you're going on an excursion. That way you have water. So I wanted to talk about the new straw policy that Carnival Cruise rolled out. They now have edible straws. They have chocolate, lime, and strawberry flavor. In the beginning of the cruise, I really liked the idea, but more and more as the cruise went on, I started disliking a couple things about it. The first thing is like, what if they give you a chocolate straw with like a strawberry daiquiri or something? It does not taste good and I don't like chocolate that much. Another thing is if you babysit your drink or take a little bit to drink it, your straw gets real soggy towards the bottom and it stops working, so I don't like that. Another thing is if you touch your straw, your fingers get real sticky, so you gotta go wash your hands. So it was a good idea overall, but I did not like it. So what I recommend is a tip is you bring your own reusable straw. It works a lot better than the edible straw they have. And it did taste good on the first day. I say you eat your first or second straw. After that, you don't even care that it's edible. You really don't, don't even eat it after that. If you guys are interested in the spa, this next tip is for you. You guys could save up to 60% if you go to the spa during a port day, especially if you're not interested in that particular port, you could save a lot of money that way. So one very important tip that we learned on this trip is to be flexible. We were supposed to go to Dominican Republic, Amber Cove, and it did not happen because the water is so choppy. So we learned to be flexible. We didn't like it, but that's what we learned. And also we learned something else. Uh, we were supposed to go to Grand Turk in Turk and Caicos, but that also didn't happen. So we are now going to Nassau, Bahamas, which we really enjoy going to, but we were looking forward to going to Grand Turk because we've never been there before. Most cruises have a energy saving system next to the front door. So what I do is I bring a credit card that I don't even use anymore just to slide it in there. That way I get to keep the lights on whenever I want to keep them on. That way I'm not using my room key. So let's just say I'm taking a shower and my wife wants to go upstairs shopping or something. If she takes the key out of there, then the lights are going to turn off and it's usually like a 30 second timer. So she's not going to know right away. She's going to take off. I'm going to be in the shower. The lights are going to turn off so to avoid that I bring this credit card this old credit card to slide right next to the door right in the system that way the lights are not turning off on me the way Carnival Cruise works is they give you a 30 minute arrival appointment window. So you have 30 minutes within that window to show up and to check in and to get on the ship. If you come any earlier, they are not going to let you in. We came only 10 minutes before our actual window, so they let us in. We didn't have a problem, but uh, we've heard of people that come way too early and they just have them wait outside the building. They don't even let them inside. And then with that said, you better be not that late because if you come late, the ship is not gonna wait for you. I will tell you guys that right now. 
If you guys are interested in more Carnival Cruise tips, click on this video right here or this playlist right here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a like and I will see you guys on the next video.